welcome to another snippet from analytics learn chain the topic for the day is what is a variable at the very outset let me make it clear that this video is for beginners without understanding the classification of variables progressing in the field of analytics is next to impossible so here we go i left me the luxury of reminiscence the joy of getting back to my own high school days st joseph's high school trivandrum where i first learned what is logarithm it is the inverse of exponentiation what is trigonometry it is that basic elementary mathematics which deals with triangles with just six measurements three sides and three angles and if i know part of this data i can reconstruct the remaining data what is calculus it is the study of the rate of change if i know the behavior of a quantity then by differentiation i can get its rate of change and if i know the rate of change a priori then by integration i can understand the behavior of the said quantity such knowledge today is getting condensed in electronic platforms like the khan academy and byju's learning app learn chain where you learn through a chain of snippets aspires to be in an identical zone but with a difference byju's and khan academy cater to the 5 to 17 year olds from kindergarten to primary school to middle school to high school and finally to junior college i would wait for a few more years and then aspire to serve that particular market where students plan to learn management and my focus would be on streams like marketing and analytics coming back to this video there cannot be a terminology more fundamental than variables in the stream called analytics this snippet looks at variables from two classification perspectives let us divide the space into continuous discrete and categorical variables and then again divide the same space into dependent and independent variables this video is not meant to be taken as a comprehensive classification of that large space called variables as an example something like a control variable a mediating variable or a moderating variable is not discussed at all in this video let us start with the classification of continuous discrete and categorical 1 and 2 are quantitative and 3 is qualitative now in a stream like marketing which do you think would be more commonly used given your penchant for numbers you would assume it is quantitative you are wrong the answer is qualitative let us now look at that variable called the categorical variable now any data where the value is a forced assignment is a categorical variable take male versus female i would assign the number 1 for male and 2 for female it is just a classification job into two categories and hence called a categorical variable another example would be the likert chart where i try to divide responses emotions into a scale of 5 and extremely satisfied would be assigned plus 2 satisfied plus 1 neutral 0 dissatisfied minus 1 and extremely dissatisfied minus 2 now these are just numbers and you should not misconstrue 2 minus 1 as equal to 1 minus 0 or the gap between extremely satisfied to satisfied 
is not the same as the gap between satisfied to neutral. It is just an order. Another example would be binary, where likes, yes could get one and no could get zero, or agreements, where a true could get a one and a false could get a zero. Now, this type of variable is called a qualitative categorical variable. Now, we come to the quantitative variables. What is the key difference between a continuous and a discrete variable? A continuous variable is something that can be measured and a discrete variable is something that is counted. Now, this can be explained better only using examples. Let us assume that I am doing a study on the impact of advertisements. And one of the variables which I would be having would be what is the duration of the ad and another variable would be what is the frequency of the ad. Suddenly it becomes very, very obvious. The duration is measured in seconds. It's a continuous variable. Whereas the frequency of the ad, how many times a Coke ad was shown versus how many times a Sprite ad was shown versus how many times a Bovento ad was shown is a count. And that becomes a discrete variable. Example number two, I'm studying the efficacy of customer calls. Obviously, the two variables which I would be having, among others, would be what is the length of the call or what is that ideal time which I need to make a call. So that is a function of time. I measure it using a stopwatch. The other is the number of calls that I need to make to move a prospect from cold to warm and then from warm to hot. That number is simply a count, a discrete variable. Moving to my favorite topic of RFM analysis. For those who are watching my videos regularly, there are already two videos up on why RFM and then how RFM. Which of this is continuous? Monetary is obviously continuous. It's a long stretch of numbers and between the lowest bill value and the highest bill value, I can have a slew of monetary bill values in a continuous pattern. Recency also is continuous if I'm looking at the database over a wide spread of time. But frequency, the number of times a customer has dropped into the shop is a count. It is a discrete variable. We now come to the second classification of dependent versus independent variables. Any scenario would be a set of causes which drives one particular effect. Independent variables are those explanatory causes and dependent variable is that one explained effect. Now the way to look at it would be a series of stimuli are independent variables and one response is a dependent variable or a series of features are independent variables and one target would be a dependent variable. Take the example of the total amount of yield that I can get from this vegetable farm. Incidentally, this is a farm which is in the outskirts of San Francisco. I happened to visit it in 2017 and I'm trying to look at what could be the drivers for this yield. I observe that the quality of the soil could be one, x1. The type of climate or the intensity of the sunshine could be two, which is x2. Availability of water, which could be either rain driven or irrigation driven, could be x3. And the quality of the seed, the nature of the seed could be the fourth variable, the fourth stimulus, which is x4. So x1, x2, x3 and x4 are the four stimuli variables which will give the response called yield from this particular farm. A more business example would be, what would be the efficacy of a digital supply chain? I would obviously be worried about what is the quality of the data, from where I'm sourcing the data, that could be the social media. How am I accessing the data? That is mobility. How do we gain insights from this data? That is analytics. And then finally, where do I store this data? Which is cloud. 
So if you want to look at it in a single equation, y is equal to beta 1 into x1 plus beta 2 into x2 plus beta 3 into x3 plus beta 4 into x4, where the beta values are a measure of how strongly each of the stimuli variable, social, mobility, analytics, and cloud will finally impact the response variable called digital supply chain and its efficacy. Hope you like this new snippet from Analytics Learn Chain, learning through a chain of snippets. The next one is coming soon. Till then, like, comment, and subscribe to your favorite channel. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.